Boom, what's up? You're watching Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Great way to support the show is patreon.com where you can submit our articles like this. Uh, Dominic Morrow, Plantastic Life, um, sent me this. And, you know, it's, it's pretty brutal. So the cost of war. So the Watson Institute uh, at Brown University, this came out in November of 2018. The human cost of post 9-11 wars, lethality and the need for transparency. And what this thing, this report goes into is it shows some pretty stark, horrifying numbers, but also that there's, there's a lack of transparency and there's still, there's still there's probably more than the numbers that are actually being reported. The numbers themselves are pretty horrifying, but there's still more that hasn't been reported. And I'm going to get into it. You know, Obama at the end of, of 18 said, oh, I'm going to open up the transparency. Oh, what a hero. The awful wars you got us into when you took us from two to seven, well, at least we can get transparency on how many civilians were killing. Fantastic. What a hero he is for the left. So direct deaths in major war zones, Afghanistan, Pakistan from October 2001, which is when our first official uh, retaliation to 9-11 to October of 18 in Iraq when we invaded in 03. That's an illegal war started by George Bush, right? Mueller was the FBI director who helped us lie in there and then the left was hanging their hopes on him for the, the um, Russia Trump thing. Same guy, same guys. <sighs> U.S. military, Afghanistan 2,400, Iraq 4,500, almost 7,000. DOD civilian casualties, 21. U.S. contractors, 7,800. 90 of them died in Pakistan. Military and police, national military and police, 109,000. Other allied troops, civilians. Now, this is the number that they deliberately keep low. It's somewhere between... 244,000 and 266,000. So a 22,000 discrepancy. Either one of these numbers is are the, the, the disgusting. It's, it sickens me that America has done this. But it's probably a lot higher than that. It's probably like a million or more. Easy. Right? Journalists, media workers, 362. Humanitarian NGO workers, 596. Total, 500,000. And again, these numbers are, are kept low by design. All of these people had families and loved ones and lives and things they wanted to do. You know who's not in here? Dick Cheney or his kids. The Bush daughters. Chelsea Clinton. Ivanka Trump, Obama's daughters. None of them are in here. The CEOs of Raytheon, I doubt any of their kids in here. Maybe some of them had kids that enlisted. Maybe they did. But how many? How many? How many? Does John Bolton have any kids on this list? Sean Hannity, Rachel Maddow, do they have kids on this list? How many people on this list came from poor working class families? What percentage? How many people on this list are one percenters? Rich kids, oh, I gotta go fight. Jared Kushner on this list? Tim Cavanaugh on this list? This, uh, this tally is an incomplete estimate, this, I don't know if I'll put together, of the human killing of these wars. The United Nations efforts in Afghanistan and Iraq to track war casualties and to identify the perpetrators of those deaths and injuries. In Iraq, the UN publishes monthly reports. In Afghanistan, the UN makes annual and semi-annual reports. 24 non-governmental organizations, the Congressional Research Service, and journalists also attempt to understand the human toll of these wars by using official U.S. government reports, other governmental data, and on-the-ground reporting. This is America's legacy. 
Afghan civilians killed by pro-government forces from 08 to 2017. Total killed, killed in aerial operations. So this is bombs, drones, the, the red dotted one. Look at the spike here. Hey, it's Obama's time. Look at that, look at Obama. Remember he ran on, I'm gonna take us down to too many because he took over, oh, Obama's keeping his word, he's keeping his word, right? Well, we're getting near, oh, he's, no, he's down, oh, well, now I got my second term. I can do whatever I want, bomb, 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 baby. Total U.S. military fatalities in Afghanistan and the Iraq war zones. This is Obama. He can claim that he just did this with drones, so he took boots off the ground. So less Americans died, I guess that's good, but then more civilians. 95% of our civilian deaths, 95% of the deaths from our bombs are civilian, 90%. Someone might be going, but Graham, it's good. I don't want Americans shouldn't die. How about neither group dies? How about no more of these wars so we don't have Americans dying? So Halliburton and Raytheon and ExxonMobil can have high profits and we don't have poor people dying because we want their minerals to make cell phones or we want to run a pipeline across Afghanistan or whatever. Refugees and internationally displaced people in millions, 2.6 million people, 1 .0, this is internally displaced. These are people still living in Afghanistan, but their homes are gone. You know, like what happens here every time there's a big hurricane, those are climate refugees. We have them here, not from wars, but not yet. 4.7 million, Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, look at this, 12.9 people displaced, internally displaced in Syria. Six million people, they had to go somewhere. We don't wanna take our refugees. So this, we bomb all these countries and this is how many people, this is a total of about 15, 19, almost 20 million total people displaced. If you just take away internally displaced, Right? You take away internally displaced. I mean, look at this number. So this is almost 10 million people. And then you add the asylum seekers. There's another million. 10, 11 million people. Not counting the ones that are in, in, displaced in their own country. This is what we're doing. You don't want refugees in this country? Stop bombing. Stop bombing the Middle East. I don't want these illegal immigrants coming here and taking our jobs. Stop bombing them. Stop bombing them because they prefer to stay home, just like you would prefer to stay home. Immigrants didn't steal your job. Billionaires did. The billionaires that create these wars and the billionaires that ship your jobs overseas. About half of the two six million refugees from the war in Afghanistan are found in Pakistan, 1.3 million people. More than 900,000 Afghans are living in Iran. Oh, we wanna to go to war there too, right? Most refugees from the war against ISIS in Iraq and Syria have been hosted in Turkey, nearly 3.5 million people. Iran is also hosting nearly a million Syrians and Iraqis. And we want, we're ramping up war, all this war, we're sending a carrier group in the Gulf and putting everyone on alert. We're creating this hysteria around Iran. You just see how our State Department does it in the last week. Blocking flights, pulling people out of the embassy. That's all scare tactics to ramp up for war. That we create, look. This update just scratches the surface of the human consequences of 17 years of war, actually. Well, this study was done in November. Now we're at 18 years of war. 18. We've been in war in Afghanistan since October of 2001. Imagine we joined the war at World War II in 1941, December of 41, and in the summer of 1959, 
we're still at war in Japan and Europe. Still at war. Too often, legislators, NGOs, and the news media that try to track the consequences of these wars are inhibited by governments determined to paint a rosy picture of perfect execution and progress. The U.S. has made some effort to increase transparency, but there are a number of areas, the number of civilians killed and injured, and the number of U.S. military and veteran suicides. For instance, 22 vets a day. I'm told there are states that don't report that veteran suicides, so it's probably higher than 22 a day. Because what, 22 vets killing themselves a day from PTSD, from bullshit corporate oil wars is a little more palatable for the American people? We're so numb to this horrifying war culture? Aside from Medea Benjamin and Code Pink, where is the anti-war movement? Where is it? Show it to me. Call out your neoliberal friends that want war because of Trump, Trump, Trump. Call them, call them warmongers. It usually shuts them up. They usually don't, they have no idea what the, huh, what, what? Yeah. You're a big Hillary supporter? You're a warmonger. She's a warmonger. You're supporting a warmonger. Hillary is a warmonger. You're supporting war. Where greater transparency would lead to greater accountability and would lead to better policy. But when the corporate media is just spewing war, 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 we're numb to it. If the, if the media was actually a watchdog to power rather than a lapdog to power, they would be pointing this out. Ad, uh, the media did this in the 70s during the Vietnam War. That's what the Pentagon papers were. That's what Ben Bradley did at the Washington Journal. Now, Ben Bradley, would, if he was alive today, would be in prison with Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning. Chelsea Manning, transgender veteran whistleblower, is in jail for doing the right thing, of showing people the war crimes of what we're doing. We should talk about, every day on the news, we should talk about all the vets that commit suicide that day, all the vets that committed suicide that day, all the civilians we've killed in poor countries. Imagine, because that's what happened. You watched, in the 70s, you came home and you watched the evening news and you saw Vietnamese women and children getting killed. You saw American GIs getting killed and people went, Jesus, what are we there for? What are we doing there? So they said, no more. And then we started the embed reporter. You're going to roll with us. So you're going to, we're going to make you our buddy and just show you what you're supposed to, what we want you to see. And you're only going to get that, our angle on it. And guess what? If you do real reporting, you don't get our protection, you're not embedded anymore. You're on your own. Okay, I'll play ball. See, that's how it works. That's how they did it with the journalists, the embedded journalists. And that's why they're just running around talking about how great war is. Trump revokes Obama-era rule on disclosing civilian casualties from U.S. airstrikes outside war zones. Obama's not a hero for disclosing civilian casualties. Obama created all these civilian casualties and because he said, oh, we should have more disclosure, he's not some hero. That's the sort of incremental, lesser of two evil shit that sickens me. All Trump is doing is just, as I've said, he's just the grossest, most egregious, disgusting version of what... So, this, this, so we're supposed to look at this and go, wow, Obama was so much better. Really? What would be, what would make Trump truly disgusting and Obama a hero if Obama was like, I ended the drone program. We, I got, there was no war while I was president. I ended all this. We gave all this aid to all the Middle East and we build hospitals and schools. And then Trump comes in and says, I'm going to bomb all of them. Then it would be like, oh my God, Trump is a madman. No, no. He's just a little more vulgar. He's just a more vulgar version of what Obama did. I'm going to disclose how many civilians I've killed as president. Wow. What a hero. What a hero he is. Oh, thanks, Obama. So presidential. The way you bury these statistics and you know these corporate media people that are, that there's ad time bought by Boeing and Raytheon and everybody else, you know they're not going to say, oh my God, this is, this. they're not going to show the videos. Chelsea Manning showed the videos and you put her in jail, Obama. You had her jailed and tortured, Obama. You sicken me, Obama, and your supporters sicken me. And any of Joe Biden's people or Hillary's people, you're all warmongers. Do you know that? You're supporting warmongers. 
How many civilians have been killed in our name? You're watching The Political Vigilante, everybody. Progressive comedy tour. Ron Placone and I are coming to the East Coast June 12th through the 19th. Get your tickets at GrahamElwood.com. Support the show at Rockfin.com slash GrahamElwood or Patreon.com slash GrahamElwood. The links are in the show notes below. And let's try to get some uh, anti-war movement going in this country. That's what I'm all about. I've seen it up close. It's horrifying.